for today. All right, let's start with uh, your name and kind of who you work with. All right, my name is Kyle Ashman. I work with Ecosystem Services out of Charlottesville, Virginia. We're a local ecological engineering firm specializing in stream and wetland restoration. All right, and where are we and what have you guys been working on here for the last couple months? Yeah, so this is a project long time coming here. We've started working this project back in 2012 with Ernie Reeves, the landowner here and farmer. Um, it's a stream and wetland mitigation bank, and we kicked off construction here in the beginning of June. Um, so about two solid months of construction, and we have a bridge here we're standing on that was just installed earlier this month. Um, so it's about 2,700 linear feet of stream restoration on Mossy Creek here in Mount Solon. Uh, used to have kind of a very over-widened channel, about 20 to 40 feet wide, and we've kind of consistently narrowed it up to kind of a 12 to 15 foot wide channel and packed it full of wood to uh, make the kind of habitat that much better and, and kind of hope please everyone who's going to come out here and fish. So the, the stream's gotten narrower, all right. Um, what has that done for the overall depth? So I'd say the depth, it's interesting, when we started narrowing up the channel, um, and keeping the, the depth uh, relatively the same, which is about two and a half to three feet wide, what we noticed is that the, the height actually kind of raised up to be connected more with the floodplain. So what we're gonna see with, in the future is Mossy Creek's gonna be much more connected to the floodplain. It's gonna flood out. It's gonna take all those silts that are coming from the farmland runoff, and it's gonna put it in that wetland vegetation to trap it out. It's gonna help actually clean out the sediment out of the stream much more keep those kind of trout habitat structures we put in much cleaner so that those things don't get covered up and the trout can't kind of hold over winter. That's the biggest difference I've actually learned from, from Brian here is that the SAV vegetation that provides the long-term, you know, over the years cover dies off during the winter. And what we're trying to do is put that winter cover, which is the wood that's not going to go away during the winter so the trout aren't leaving or dying off. And what we hope is populations are going to improve over time just because there's more long-term cover with the wood habitat. So, so basically by not having high steep banks, which the creek cuts constantly and collapses, this will allow it to spill out, slow down, and deposit. Right. And we've also created some lunker structures, some overhanging cover to kind of mimic those undercut banks where we kind of have had that in good areas of the stream that I know anglers know that fish well. So we're trying to kind of take the, the spots that we know fish well and the features that we know produce good habitat and try and emulate that and replicate that in other parts of the stream while narrowing up the channel. So your, your company was largely responsible for the design of this creek. Right. Of course, you work with the farmers, the landowners as well. Tell us a little bit about, you know, you've got this nice canvas here, this big, beautiful farm, and uh, you've got to make decisions on where to leave the creek in place and where to move it. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I would say that the uh, alignment decision was based on historic aerial imagery, which we were able to pull aerials as early as the early 1940s. And what we gleaned from there was that, not that the stream was drastically in a different place, but what we noticed was that the channel width was what we designed here, which is 12 to 15 feet wide. And so over time, since the 1940s with agricultural you know, activities, this channel's over widened and basically had these big SAV islands grow within the channel. And so what we've done is looked at those historical aer uh, aerial imagery. We've had a gauge out here for the last eight years. And what we try to understand is with the spring fed system, what is the seasonal, you know, seasonal fluctuation of the spring flow? And what we've noticed is that about 40 to 45 CFS is, is essentially the flow that's coming in through this channel. So a lot of the sizing of the channel was both, both looking at the historical imagery, knowing that it was narrower, and then also looking at what size channel width and depth would hold that 40 to 45 CFS flow. And that, that's kind of what has resulted in the channel that we see now. So you guys use historical data and then you look at flood data. Uh, but then there's some artistic license too, right? Once you get out here, tell us a little bit about like the crew that did the, the actual excavation work. Yeah, so kind of the, 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 the next step is once you get a channel that you feel like is going to size, you know, is going to hold the water where the water level is right near at top of bank. Um, basically, once we have that designed for, the contractor comes in here and cuts that channel size. And then by packing in wood of various types and various or, uh, orientations and configurations, 
we're then able to then slow the water down and add a complexity of both shallow water, deep water, fast moving and slow moving water. So essentially, if we didn't put structures in here, you could see that it would be a very uniform flowing channel. That's not what we want for trout habitat. We want that kind of messiness. And so what Shenandoah Streamworks was the hired contractor, uh, and they came in here and worked with us. We provided the construction oversight. As I said before, they started here in early June, and they came in here and essentially started the upstream phase, upstream with the bridge that we're standing on, and they built that essentially in the month of June, and then they picked up basically downstream of here uh, and, and constructed this channel in the month of July this past month. So looking upstream here, I was here you know, a month ago, and it was, you know, just mud and dirt, right? And um, it, it, so if some people didn't know any different, looking upstream here, they would say that this thing's been, you know, hasn't even hardly been touched by the hand of man. Uh, you can see everything is really growing up. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about the vegetation that's there now, uh, what's to come, and also the in-stream vegetation, like the recovery period and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think with, starting with the in the in stream vegetation, the SAV, the, the kind of aquatic vegetation that we're all aware of here, what we're doing by narrowing the channel is increasing the velocities, increasing the speed of the water. So what I think over time is, is going to happen is we'll probably see less vegetation in the channel, but we're going to see it come back over the next couple of years. Um, in terms of the stream bank vegetation, particularly this upland area or this upstream area is an existing wetland that we cut the new channel through. So there's a lot of existing wetland grasses, sedges and rushes that are out here already. And what we've noticed is just by throwing a temporary seed mix to get the cover down post-construction, what we're seeing is the wetland grasses are quickly taking over as well. So what we're doing right now is working with a planting contractor to figure out, well, where do we want to plant the grass plugs? We're going to plant them along the stream banks, but at what density, given how much of the native vegetation is coming in already? So we're looking to plant vegetation this coming fall and this winter. We also have some live stakes chosen to be in clustered spots to be able to kind of give that shady cover, um, but also leave a, a corridor for the anglers to be able to walk free freely up and down to, fit to fish the stream. So let's talk about fishing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and because obviously, you know, for decades now, this farmer, along with others through, you know, just the kindness of their hearts have allowed the public to access these streams. And so, you know, restoration jobs go on like this all the time, but the public doesn't always get to, to see it and benefit from it. We've had a lot of questions about how will this affect the fishing? Uh, so, so going back into the last two months, Kind of what are some steps that you guys did uh, working with the DWR, et cetera, to make sure that the fish got, you know, packed up and moved out? And then, right. and then what are we, what's it looking like? Like how long till we find fish in here again? How long till it's fishing well? And maybe, you know, the benthic and bug life returning as well. Yeah, so it's, what's nice about this, this stream is, is it's, you know, both DWR stocks us with brown trout, but also DEQ, um, has a biological monitoring program for this too because of an impairment for E. coli. So we've both worked with DWR and DEQ to do a baseline study to understand the bugs that are out here and the fish that are out here. During construction, we had Steve Reeser and his staff come out when the timing was right to basically take a section of channel that was going to be filled and we went through and we shocked the fish and then we brought them upstream and put them in the new channel or put them further downstream outside of the active work areas. So that happened a couple times just to make sure that we were doing our due diligence to kind of relocate and get, get not just the trout, but all the fish that we could shock and move them upstream or downstream out of the active work areas. I would say that what would be nice and what we're looking forward, forward to working with DWR and DEQ is to kind of see, okay, well, what is this post-construction monitoring data look like? Are, you know, over time, are the fish populations going to increase? You know, does, does DWR, DWR still have to stock as many fish as they do in terms of the brown trout, or will there be eventually some type of reproducing potential out here? Um, those are the things that we're gonna work with DWR and DEQ as it's already kind of embedded in their monitoring program. Um, as far as we're concerned, we have our own private monitoring uh, through the mitigation bank. There's monitoring requirements that we're gonna collect, and we'll be kind of combining all that to kind of, once again, speak to the performance of, the, of this project. So I, I noticed when I walked up this morning already, just right here where the creek was, you know, very much disturbed, uh, the trico spinners were already lined up over the top of the creek uh, right here at this spot. So 
there's places where you guys move stream there's places where you just narrowed stream and, and left you know some of the substrate intact uh, talk to us for a second about what you expect uh, for the benthic life uh, the bug life in the creek and maybe like how long until we see that return obviously you know these are band-aid these are these are all going to be for the better good and eventually the, the hatches and the bug life should be better but what do you think on the recovery i mean i think as you were as you were telling me before we started here that you know the the benthic habitat you typically see in the system coming from those sav beds will probably take a, to take a couple of years but i would say that the wood that we've immediately put back in the system is immediately giving a food source for the bugs so coupled with that and planting these grasses and sedges and rushes in the in in this coming winter and fall, I think that we're going to see a pretty a pretty quick rebound and probably a better re rebound than we thought come next spring and coming coming into those those next couple spring events. How long uh, is left on this being kind of an active construction site? So here we are mid August, um, and and uh, is the public currently allowed to come up and walk this and fish this or you guys need a couple more weeks before you button it up where are we at on that for access yeah i would say if you went to dwr's website i think they they mentioned that you know pretty much july 28th or you know beginning of august is where is where things would be wrapping up i would say that is the case um you know i think you're you're more than welcome to kind of come up here and start fishing i would say it would probably be best to stay on this lower end and not go upstream of this crossing for now um, when we figure out the planting plan and when the planting co contractor comes out um, and starts, you know, doing his work here, we'll, we'll make sure to notify, notify you guys in DWR and kind of make sure they update the website. Um, so so the, the kind of sensitive, you know, point there is once these grass plugs come in, we obviously don't want people to be trampling around, particularly with the, with the wooden stakes too associated with the natural fiber matting. We want everyone to be careful and just be sensitive to kind of this, this newly denuded area. It's, it's, it's sensitive and fragile now, but as you can see, vegetation has quickly taken over. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things where we'll notify you when the planting comes. But for now, I think, you know, this lower end can, can be open. We've also had some fishermen be able to fish the lower end and, and some of these upper ends through Ernie's permission. And uh, signs are all pointing to fish are already here. Um, I'd say, you know, the, the habitat is, is different. You know, these brown trout are really comfortable with the SAV beds. And right now they're not, they're not here. It's a lot of the crisscrossing wood and root wads and structures, but it's good to hear that, you know, the, the fish are here and moving around and trying to get more comfortable. Yeah, we can see the, the matting there b uh, behind you and the stakes. And of course, as the grasses grow up through those, it conceals them. And, yep. uh, you know, so that's an obstacle anglers are going to have to look out for. For sure. Tripping, tripping on some of these stakes. Absolutely. Um, well, so tell us uh, quickly, so I, you mentioned kind of the overall length. What are you thinking, uh, at, uh, how much stream did you all restore? Mm -hmm. And how much do you think you potentially added to the overall length of, of this stretch? Yeah, so about 2,700 linear feet is the total length of new channel. And I would say that the main sections where we added length were up here where this, the channel was very straight. We swung it out into the historic floodplain where at one time there was a channel out there. Uh, and then downstream where we cut down the old railroad bed, we swung the channel out and added some length there. So I would say about 500 to 1,000 linear feet was probably added in those two sections to kind of add some additional meandering and sinuosity. So more, more creek and better habitat for the fish. Um, and more stable banks uh, to keep the sedimentation from from taking too much hold of the creek and just overall win-win win for the farmer absolutely right? win for the creek win for the landowners downstream um, so any, any other comments you'd like to make about this project I know it's it's been a long one for you um, yeah no I'd say your future plans what else are you guys are you guys staying in the valley here and doing some more good stuff yeah absolutely we're working with um, you know Ernie on some other projects that he has going on uh, we're working with Forest Service on some more fish passage work so yeah we're, we're kind of still in the valley up and down 81 um, very much looking forward to seeing the feedback that you guys get on this creek and see what the anglers think about this is that's kind of one of the most important things here is the anglers and the trout. Well, we really appreciate you spending some time with us this morning and uh, thanks for all the good work. Keep it up and let's, let's get more of this going. Absolutely, thank you. Thanks.